This is Jason Watt. I'm here today with just a quick video about shareholder loans. This is a often misunderstood topic. Um, I'm going to probably blame the accounting profession for that. It's one of these terms that gets used all the time. And what it means from the accountant's perspective, it's just a balance sheet item showing whether the corporation owes money to a shareholder, which is generally a good thing. Um, we're going to see an example of this momentarily, or whether the shareholder owes money to the corporation, which is generally a bad thing, although there are some exceptions to that. The shareholder loan account is not well understood, and I find part of the issue here is that we don't explain whether or not the corporation owes money to the shareholder or the shareholder owes money to the corporation. We just say there's a shareholder loan balance, which doesn't tell nearly enough of the story. Now, this video is clearly not tax advice in any way, shape, or form. It is strictly educational. Um, if you're a business owner or a prospective business owner uh, watching this video, you must seek professional advice for how to deal with your shareholder loans or any accounting questions for that matter. Okay, so for starters, we'll look at the good one. This is where we have a shareholder who has loaned money to her corporation. So Denise started her business unincorporated five years ago. She then incorporated a couple of years ago. When she incorporated, she had $100,000 of then personally owned assets that she transferred into the corporation. Now, if the corporation had had $100,000 of cash, which would not have been possible when it was a brand new corporation, she could have taken $100,000 out at that moment. Essentially, her corporation could have paid her for those assets. Instead, her corporation owes her $100,000. This year, the corporation has $20,000 of surplus cash, and she could take that out as a taxable dividend, or she could pay herself more salary. Both of those things will create taxable income for her. Instead, she is going to take that $20,000 out tax-free and reduce that shareholder loan account to $80,000. And this is a, an overall planning point that we often want to do whatever we can to extract the maximum shareholder loan value from the corporation. So if Denise is owed $80,000, we're going to want to find a way over the next a couple of years maybe to get that $80,000 out. You don't generally want to leave it in there forever and ever. It is that tax efficient way to get value out. Although maybe if she's in a low tax bracket, it might make sense to wait until she's making more money to start to extract that value. So when we have this loan to the corporation, this can happen because maybe we started up like Denise did, so she needed to capitalize the corporation, or maybe her corporation isn't able to borrow money, so she goes and takes out a home equity line of credit. Like I said, this is not advice. This is just something that can happen. So she takes a personal loan of some sort because it might be easier for her to borrow depending on her collateral situation. And she that then might take that personally borrowed money and invest that into her corporation. If she does that, uh, any interest on that money is likely deductible. Although again, go get tax advice. Uh, she might be owed money by her corporation, but she might be restricted by some sort of covenant from a lender. Um, we had this once we had a, a lease in place where part of the lease agreement was that we were not permitted to take any compensation beyond the level we were currently at until the lease was uh, fully paid. So you can get this kind of restriction. Uh, you might have business partners who have similar covenants in place, or the corporation might just be short of cash. She might have a, a salary of $100,000 a year, but the corporation can only afford to pay her $70,000. So she takes the $70,000 of cash and leaves a $30,000 shareholder loan balance to be paid later. So it depends there. And again, seek accounting advice. Okay. Now, a lot of times people ask, well, should I charge interest on this loan? Does it make sense if my corporation owes me money for me to charge interest? First, we want to keep in mind that when you charge interest, that interest is taxable, whether paid or payable. So if you're not taking the money out of the corporation, but you're charging interest, you're still going to add that amount of interest to your income for the year. And the corporation is taxed at a low tax rate, the shareholders at a high tax rate. So do you wanna create this interest income 
where your corporation's going to get a deduction that's not worth very much and you're going to pay tax that's worth a lot, I would suggest that in most cases it does not make sense to charge interest on a shareholder loan. Although if you've got you know, five shareholders and one of the loans money to the corporation and they're really giving something up for that, well, it might make sense in a case like that. Um, again, something that would have to be figured out on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, no absolutes here. Okay, this next scenario is a little more complicated. This is where we have a loan from the corporation to Charles. So Charles has borrowed money from his corporation. In this instance, he took $20,000 out of his corporation to help make a down payment on a car. He took that money out in the 2022 fiscal year. That by itself is not a problem. But if he ends the 2023 fiscal year with any loan outstanding to him, it's taxable for Charles and it's not deductible for the corporation. I want to be very clear here. He could pay down that loan at some point, but if he then ends the 2023 fiscal year with a loan outstanding to him, that $20,000, unless he's got less than that, if he had $10,000 of loan outstanding at the end of 2023, that would be taxable. If he had $30,000 of loan at the end of 2023, only $20,000 would be taxable. Basically, any amount that is outstanding for two consecutive year ends. And it's just the year ends, just those two points in time you will look at to determine whether or not this happens. So if that does happen, if you have those two consecutive year ends with that loan outstanding, then that's taxable income for the shareholder, for Charles in this case, and it's not deductible for the corporation. And your accountant will warn you of this. Again, if you're dealing with a good professional tax advisor and you turn in your financial statements and they show a shareholder loan, the accountant will say, hey, you have to end next year with a zero shareholder loan balance unless there's a tax planning reason, which we'll talk about in a few minutes for doing otherwise. Now, if he does incur a taxable benefit, he can repay the loan later and get an offsetting deduction. This is a tough thing to plan out because you have to have the loan outstanding for two consecutive years. It does mean though, that you can take the loan, pay tax on it, um, maybe in a low income year, and then repay it in a higher income year. Um, you have to be careful with that kind of planning. Again, anything that's too aggressive here is going to likely trigger other, um, other provisions from Canada Revenue Agency. When you do this, this time interest must be charged. If you don't charge interest, the interest is gonna be added to the loan amount as if you had charged it anyways, and we have to charge at at least the prescribed rate. So that's not necessarily ideal. Um, there are some exceptions here. These are very difficult. The tax planning around this has to be uh, bulletproof. Uh, CRA does not like these arrangements when there's any kind of gray area. This is very general again, that if you have a shareholder, so if you have a loans available to your employees for any of these three purposes, home purchase, to purchase shares from treasury, or to acquire a car for use at work, if the shareholder is also an employee and accesses these loans the same way that an employee could, then we don't necessarily incur this shareholder loan. Again, though, I'm sure you can appreciate there's a lot of manipulation that happens here and CRA does not look kindly on that. So this has to be done with, I would say, good, careful tax advice. And then we do have this short-term loan provision where maybe Charles does take that money out early in 2022 to buy the car knowing that he's going to repay it by later in the year. Maybe he knows there's going to be some money coming into the corporation. Well, you can take that short-term loan, uh, not pay any tax on it as long as you repay it by that year end. You don't really create any complexity that way. I know some people who do this sort of treat their corporation like a little savings account, and it can be done. You want to be careful around that and really be careful that your tax advisor knows what you're doing. I hope this is helpful. I hope you enjoy your continued studies. Thank you very much.